The Honourable Minister of uh, Justice and uh, of Attorney General of Canada. Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to rise to speak to the motion proposed by the Honourable Member from Victoria uh, for the decriminalization of the offence of possession of small amounts of marijuana for personal use. I will be splitting my time with the member from Scarborough Southwest. Madam Speaker, the government has been very clear its platform commitment with its platform commitment and in its statement to Canadians and through this parliament of its intention to legalize, strictly regulate and restrict access to marijuana. Our government's objectives in doing so are to protect young Canadians by keeping marijuana out of the hands of children and youth. We also want to keep profits out of the hands of criminals, particularly organized crime. Through this process, we want to ensure that Canadians are well informed through sustained and appropriate public health campaigns for young or for youth in particular to ensure the risks are understood. Let me be clear, the law with respect to marijuana is not in limbo. It is still in effect. Marijuana is currently a, schedule, a scheduled drug under Schedule 2 of the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. The law is in force and it should be obeyed. The police have been enforcing this legislation and have the legal authority to do so until the law is changed. As we are all well aware, marijuana is not always a benign substance. While many believe this substance to be harmful, uh, its use presents a significant risk to certain segments of the Canadian population, notably children. Therefore, our first public interest priority is the protection of children. Canada currently has the highest rates of marijuana usage in any developed country in the world, among, or especially among youth. There is a significant body of scientific evidence that marijuana poses a significant health risk to the developing brain. Accordingly, we need to do a better job at protecting our youth. We also have to consider other public health and safety risks such as the need to prevent drug-impaired driving and the need to promote safe and responsible production and distribution of marijuana. In Canada, organized crime profits in the billions of dollars from illegal trafficking of drugs generally and from marijuana in particular. Therefore, another important, very important public policy objective for our government through the legalization and the regulation of marijuana is to take those profits away from organized crime, away from street gangs, and away from those who would victimize and, through violence, threaten so many of our communities. The violence and victimization that takes place in communities as a direct result of illegal activity around marijuana takes a terrible toll. We believe that strictly controlled regulatory regime uh, that is based on public health, a public health model will better protect our communities and especially our children. We believe that public, a public health approach will assure all Canadians that marijuana can be made available legally and safely to responsible adults. Our government will develop a regulatory scheme that will ensure that the production, distribution, retail sale and consumption of marijuana will be controlled by regulation so as to ensure that we can achieve both our public safety aims and our public health aims. Madam Speaker, this motion proposes that the government immediately decriminalize the simple possession of marijuana. While the motion does not define what is meant by decriminalize, one thing is certain. If decriminalization were to occur, it would mean that marijuana would remain an illegal substance and that it would continue to be grown and distributed by organized crime networks. Canadians, both adults and youth, would continue to purchase a product of unknown potency and quality while fueling the profits of organized crime. Simply removing the criminal penalties for possession of marijuana would do nothing to make it harder for young people to access it. In fact, decriminalization may actually make it easier to acquire. Nor would decriminalization ensure that the quality of the marijuana would be safe for consumption. Black market marijuana is often contaminated with pesticides, herbicides, and mold. Decriminalization would not improve this situation. 
Moreover, it would not address illegal trafficking nor prevent criminal organizations from um, deriving enormous profits. Decriminalizing possession of marijuana without ensuring the appropriate controls are in place for its safe production, distribution, and access would be giving a green light to dealers and criminal organizations to continue to sell unregulated and unsafe marijuana to Canadians, especially children and youth. Madam Speaker, the government believes that there is a better approach to control the production, distribution and consumption of marijuana than is currently the case under existing law. Improving on the present situation is a complex task. It will take a great deal of work. There are important questions that need to be answered. With these, with these as our objectives, the government has undertaken to establish a task force on marijuana legalization and regulation. The task force will engage with provincial and territorial governments, indigenous governments and national organizations, youth and experts in public health, substance abuse, policing and law enforcement, justice and economics. Crucially, it will also provide opportunities for individual Canadians to provide input and share their views. The aim of this consultation is to develop a comprehensive and properly functioning regime for controlling the safe production, distribution and consumption of cannabis products across Canada. This task force will be set up very shortly and will have an ambitious timeline so that it can inform the government the government on its progress and complete its review in a timely and responsible way. As you are no doubt aware, Madam Speaker, my colleague, the Minister of Health, announced last or this past April at the United Nations General Assembly special session on the world <coughs> drug problem that the government would propose a new legislative framework for the legalization and strict regulation of marijuana in the spring of 2017. As you can see, it will take time to develop legislation and regulations to protect all Canadians. Rushing into an interim period of decriminalization, which will inject more unsafe and criminally grown and distributed drugs onto our streets and into our schools is not in the best interest of Canadians, especially our youth. A properly designed and regulated system for the legal and safe production, sale and possession of marijuana is the best ans answer to the concerns that we all have about the current law. We are confident that when the government bill is brought forward, members of the House will appreciate why it's important to take the time needed to engage with experts and all Canadians in order to develop this important but complex legislative framework. Madam Speaker, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to this motion. While I understand the good intentions of this proposed motion, I cannot support it. Decriminalization, as the Honourable Member proposes, would only deal with the demand side of marijuana and does not address its supply. It would leave the drug and its profits under the control of organized crime and do nothing to prevent young people from accessing it. The harms it would cause outweigh any possible benefits. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Uh, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I listened with great interest to the uh, speech of my colleague, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada. Earlier this afternoon, uh, the Minister's Parliamentary Secretary suggested that the Statistics Canada data that uh, we cited about the number of simple possession charges in the country were uh, somehow no longer reflecting current reality. So can the Minister advise this House how many thousands of Canadians have been given criminal records since the Liberals were elected in October of 2015? The RO Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Well, I thank uh, my honourable colleague for the question, and uh, I do not have the exact number as to the question, but I am happy to endeavour to find that answer and bring it back to my honourable colleague. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The honourable member for Oshawa. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the minister for her speech. Um, basically, I was back in my riding, and one of these illegal dispensaries had popped up in Oshawa, and I had 
former teacher come up and talk to me about uh, some of the edibles being diverted to kids. And uh, the reason the Liberals brought this forward, they said it was going to keep the profits out of organized crime and keep it safe for our kids. And unfortunately, because they haven't thought this through and they put no money in Budget 16 for proper inspection and enforcement, the exact opposite is true. We're getting uh, more of these kid-friendly products into kids' hands. And the money in these dispensaries, Madam Speaker, I wonder where the Minister actually thinks the marijuana is coming from. So I'd like to ask her, if these are currently illegal, why aren't they cracking down on the illegal dispensaries? And why was there no money put into the budget for this, this program that they're putting forward? Minister? Well, I'd like to thank uh, uh, my colleague across the way for, for the question and the question that uh, addresses uh, many different uh, issues that we're wanting to move forward with. Uh, as I mentioned in my remarks, we are moving forward and we'll announce very shortly a task force that will look into uh, and engage many experts in the area of health, in the area of law enforcement, justice, uh, among other issues, to actually have conversations about products that are uh, available. Um, our objective, as I have stated, is to keep um, harmful products out of the hands of children. And uh, as the member quite rightly states, um, you know, um, shops that are operating right now outside of the marijuana for medical purposes regulations are operating illegally. And we respect the role of local law enforcement agencies to do their jobs. Questions and comments, questions and commentaires, l'honorable député de Whitby. The honourable member for Whitby. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my honourable colleague for her question. Um, Madam Speaker, I have a 17-year-old daughter, and like many in, uh, in Whitby, it is a bedroom community, a lot of families. So I'd like to ask the honourable um, Minister of, of Justice, what impact decriminalization would have on our on our young people in school and what uh, and alternatively what is the impact of, of taking the steps the cautious steps that she's outlined and uh, and waiting until it is legalized the honorable minister well, I'd like to thank uh, my colleague for the question. As I have stated, the ultimate objective of our government in terms of the legalization of marijuana is to ensure two objectives, actually, to keep it out of the hands of children and keep the profits out of the hands of organized crime. We want to proceed on this highly complex matter in terms of legalization in a cautious and orderly manner so we can ensure that we restrict access and we strictly regulate marijuana, being mindful and having regard uh, to the opinions of experts to the um, contributions of Canadians when we engage in a task force so we ensure that their voices are heard and that we ensure that we achieve our ultimate objectives after we engage in a task force and after we uh, put forward uh, legislation that will uh, achieve those objectives. Resuming debate, reprise the debat.